Hey guys, I'm Julie from Julie Cannon Science, and today I am super excited to talk to you about claim evidence reasoning responses. And the reason I'm excited is because this is something that I completely failed at for a long time. And over the last couple of years, I really focused in on it because I knew that my teaching strategies for writing were not very strong. And so I found some things that have worked really well for me, and I can't wait to share them with you. So writing is a huge component in science. Scientists have to be able to communicate with each other and the world about very complex topics in a clear and concise way. Uh, I love that the NGSS has focused in on writing in some of their SCPs like engaging in argument and constructing explanations. I know we all think it's important, but it is so difficult to get kids to actually write high quality scientific writing. So today my hope is that I'll share with you some strategies that will help scaffold that process while still keeping the heavy lifting on kids. A great resource for writing in science is this book called Writing in Science by Betsy Rep Fulweiler, and it's filled with so much good information. I will put a link to it below. It's not an affiliate link. I've just, I read like this whole thing and highlighted the whole, throughout and wrote notes. It's just filled with tons of research-based information. And my focus today on this blog is gonna be about how I apply some of these strategies to claim evidence reasoning specifically. So I don't know about you, but in my first few years of teaching, I was just very proud of myself if we did a lab and we cleaned it up. And then the next day we moved on to the next thing. And now I realize that I was doing a really big disservice to my kids in skipping the analysis and the writing portion at the end of that. And so my recommendation and the recommendation from this book, Writing in Science, is to set aside at least one day for an argument that is a science session where you are gathering evidence, you're doing experiments, watching demonstrations, reading texts, and gathering evidence for your argument, and then setting aside a whole day for a writing session. And in that session, really teaching strategies and working with kids on how to write a high quality scientific argument. Um, and that's like the minimum. When I introduced it in fifth grade, we spent two days gathering evidence and then two days writing our arguments the first time. Writing the arguments and then revising the arguments the second day. And that really gives kids such a good chance to learn the concepts and internalize them. And then the next time you do it, you can do it faster. Um, the kids will do more of it and take on more ownership of the process and it will actually save you tons of time during the year. Okay, so now I'm going to change the camera view to show you the resources and model for you how I would teach a science session and a writing session in my classroom. All right, so the first day when you are preparing to write an argument should always be a science session where you introduce the question that students will investigate and students will have hands-on experience to gather information and evidence. This is such an essential step. Students will be able to write more clearly and deeply about a topic that they have had observed firsthand. So this is the graphic organizer that I would use during the science session. And this is where you will introduce the question to your students. So in this case, the question is, why does the sun look like it is bigger and brighter than other stars? And students are going to write an argument based on evidence that they are finding from four different activities. And I really love to use a mix of experiments and demonstrations and uh, reading from text. And what the kids do is complete the activity and write down their evidence. And you can either have them write why they think it's important or you can wait and have them do this during the discussion part when you come back whole group. So this is what it might look like if students have um, completed it. So for example, um, the activities, this one's a hands-on measuring paper width 
This one's another hands-on uh, flashlight brightness. They take a flashlight from different um, distances and see how bright it is. And this way you're getting quantitative data from both of these. And then lastly, researching a text about stars. And they're pulling out important information from the text as well. Um, so then this last part is at the end of this day, you really need to have a conversation with the kids so that they can start to analyze and start to put their ideas together. So you could do this part all together. Um, so we pulled out this evidence. Now tell me why is this important? This why is this important is going to prepare kids for the reasoning portion of the writing, which is the hardest part. So if you're having this discussion together at the end of class, you're really solidifying the ideas that you wanted them to get from these different activities, and you're preparing them for the hardest part of the CER argument. So this is my little mini word wall that I've created. On this side, I've grouped them together to be content specific words. And on this side are more science words that can apply to any topic. Um, it's really important that you introduce vocabulary when it makes sense to kids. So I would not pre-teach all of these before kids have a, um, an idea of what they should do. Uh, but you teach them when you need to or after they've had some sort of experience with it. So for example, our two top words, evidence. Really on the science session, before we start, they have to understand what evidence is. And so I would introduce this, I would say, you know, after we've introduced the question, I would introduce what evidence means um, and that we are going to start to gather information that helps us answer a question by doing activities. So we're gonna find information that helps us answer our big question and that is called evidence. And then I would post this. Um, and then apparent brightness, this is really hard to understand if you don't have some sort of actual um, experience to attach it to. So I would actually wait until they've done the flashlight brightness part. And then when we're discussing and talking about why it's important, we can talk about the flashlight's brightness doesn't actually change when it's sitting there, like it's not physically changing, but when you move further away, the apparent brightness changes. When you move closer, the apparent brightness changes. And so then they have something to put this word to and actually understand what it means. And the last resource to prepare ahead of time are the graphic organizers for the writing session. This is a freebie, I've linked it below. You can go to my Teachers Pay Teacher store and download it for free. Um, it includes a lot of different options based on how complex the argument is and maybe what grade level you teach. So this first one is pretty basic. It is just the claim, the evidence, and the reasoning. The evidence um, arrow points to the claim because the evidence backs up the claim. And then the reasoning points to the arrow between them because the reasoning should connect your evidence to the claim. That's the hardest concept for kids to get, but we're gonna give them um, help in understanding it and give them some good sentence starters so that they can actually complete the reasoning portion. You could also use a slightly more complex one where there's two pieces of evidence and reasoning for both of those and then three pieces of evidence and reasoning for these. And after kids have um, kind of brainstormed through their argument, then there is a worksheet where they can start to actually draft their argument, claim evidence reasoning. And this sheet is great if you have one piece of evidence, um, then you would stop right here. If you use two or three, then you could print out the back page as well and it includes evidence two, reasoning two, evidence three, reasoning three, and the summary. This is especially great for the upper grade levels. Um, in the argument that we're talking about, actually with the brightness of the sun and stars, we do either three or two pieces of evidence at fifth grade. So we would actually need to continue on to this one as well. And then the last one that's in here is just paragraph form. 
So you could go directly from something like this graphic organizer and then go right to the paragraph form instead of doing this in between. So there's just lots of options for you as a teacher, whatever you want to use with your students and you think that they are ready for. All right, this last part is the part that really changed my instruction. And so the first time that I teach claim evidence reasoning, instead of having the kids do it right away, we do a shared whole group writing session. And this looks like the teacher asking questions, but still holding the students accountable to providing the content and the answers for this. Students are gonna sit and watch this and talk to each other. They are not gonna write their own. And then after you finish writing a model and working with the students to create a model, you remove it and give some scaffolds and then they take an at bat themselves. This is so important because often when we write, the students will just copy exactly what we have. And that's not actually helping them to grow. Um, you know, a couple students in the class can do the work instead of everybody having to do the intellectual work. So what this looks like is I take one of the graphic organizers and I pre-fill it all out. Then I copy this at least twice for each class that I have. Do not rewrite all of this. Like this will make it go faster. Um, it definitely helps with management to already have these things pre-written and only write your responses underneath. So I've already written in my question, why does the sun look like it is bigger and brighter than other stars? And I've written a sentence stem for all of them. Now you have not passed the sheet out to students yet. Students are not going to get the sheet until after you've completed it. You're going to remove your example and then give them only what's on this paper right now, the sentence starters and the question. That way they are doing the heavy lifting. They are taking an at bat instead of just copying. So this is what the process would look like. All right, students. Yesterday, we started to gather evidence about our question. Why does the sun look like it is bigger and brighter than other stars? We're going to write a claim. That's our answer to this question. And this is the part where you might introduce the claim vocabulary card. I want to introduce it before this part because you haven't really needed it before this. So I would introduce this here. All right, so my claim is going to be an answer to the question. So I'm going to turn around the question. The sun looks bigger and brighter than other stars because I want you to think about why do you think the sun looks bigger and brighter? We already know that it's not, but why does it look bigger? Think about based what you saw yesterday in our four activities. All right, now turn and talk to your partner and answer this question using this as your sentence stem. Go. Once you've come back from the turn and talk, you'll call on a student to complete the sentence and they may say the sun looks biggest and brightest compared to other stars because it's the closest to earth. They may also not say that. And so at that point, that's okay. You can call on other students and gain consensus. Uh, when you're teaching claim evidence reasoning, I think it makes sense to have a more straightforward claim first. And then later in the year, add in claims that may not have a right answer. I think that's super essential because then kids can start to debate a bit. But you'll be able to call on multiple people and then get a consensus with the class. You'll finish this and students will watch um, and you'll move on to the next one. And so next is evidence. In this case, we did four activities. So there are multiple pieces of evidence that could fit for this. Um, when you first teach it, maybe you don't do four activities. Maybe it's more um, simple compared to that because this was my third unit out of four and so when we wrote our arguments we actually every kid had to have at least two pieces of evidence and then kids who finished early could add a third piece for bonus um, and so then I would say 
All right, now that you have written your claim, we need to write evidence that backs up our claim. Evidence provides scientific data from investigations or research to support your claim. And students learn that word the day before because they were gathering evidence in their science experiments. Um, but at this point, you could tell them, pick the piece of evidence that you think is the strongest and why you think it's the strongest. Turn into your, talk to your partners, go. All right, after you've gone over the evidence, you'll write it down together as a team. And you may say, you and your partner may not have picked the same piece of evidence as the strongest, that's okay. You're watching my example. Later, when you write your own argument, you can put your own evidence here that you think is the strongest. And then the last portion is the hardest for kids. And this is the reasoning portion. And it's really difficult because it connects how the evidence supports the claim. I think the thing that has been the most helpful for me with getting kids to write good reasoning is giving good sentence stems. So something like this evidence is important because this evidence supports my claim because, and that way students have um, a sentence stem that can help them actually write down what an explanation of the evidence is. A lot of times kids think that they've done it when they've written down the data. Um, a flashlight at 0.5 meters away was 1500 lux and then a flashlight at 2 meters away was 150 lux. They think that's enough, but that doesn't actually connect why that supports the claim. They would have to say something like, this evidence is important because it shows that stars that are farther away would also look dimmer when they are farther away from Earth. And that would help to support the idea that the sun is close and it looks bright and the other stars are far away and they look dimmer. The final thing that you would do now is after you've written the argument, you would take away your argument from the overhead. So this is all filled in and you've demonstrated it for kids. You would take it away and underneath is just the photocopied version with the sentence stems only. This still provides kids with a reminder of what you talked about, um, but it doesn't give them your exact answers. And then you would pass out a clean sheet to each kid. And now they need to start from scratch but they can look up front for the question, for the uh, sentence starters and the stems, and they can actually have some help with it. And they can access and think back to the information that you wrote on your full argument. And that way um, they have an exemplar of what it looks like, but they're still responsible for doing the heavy lifting. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I will put a link to all the free templates for my TPT store in the description, as well as the writing and science. And please send me emails or comment with any questions you have.